Hey Collective and welcome back to my channel, it's Al. And this video is going to be specifically uh, sent out onto the Al Altruistic Channel's Arabalo um, page uh, uh, because of the fact that I just did something completely foreign to my normal everyday um, manner of being. And it was because of something that I came to realize about my path, my life path as a soul, um, that shocked me actually because I wasn't expecting it uh, and so this is going to speak specifically to the collective anybody who's enlightened or already awakened on their own journey to the fact that sometimes where you think you're going ends up going the other way and so in in those moments the thing that I wanted to express here is that you just have to relinquish control of it all and just go with it right like you have to be willing to commit to the vision in order to <laughs> to truly to truly get the answers that you you're seeking and so in particular <laughs> what had happened was i was minding my own business really but i had completed obviously the last karmic cycle and i had released that information i had put that all out there and i concluded it with the last article i did prior to this one uh, um called the new world vision on linkedin as well and what that did is it literally just summarized my year-long spiritual journey as you guys know and it kind of wrapped up everything in a very nicely nice package but it was controversial in what i said and, and stuff like that but it was still minimalistic because i'm not a very out there personality right <laughs> so i was like okay well i'll release that and as you guys know it happened at time perfectly with the uh the year anniversary of my leaving new orleans to go for the journey and so the day of, that would have been the exact year, the same place that I was staying suddenly was closing and I was kind of back at square one. But that was the illusion, right? And so we kind of talked about in one of the last videos that that was all BS, right? That's part of the process is that when you take these leaps of faith, that you go through these little test areas. And one of the tests that I was going through was that it may have appeared to the external world that I was back at square one my having already gone through the journey had already changed that dynamic to split the timelines so even though it looked like i was entering the same space again having the same problem again it wasn't the same person so that immediately separated it so if i had gotten stuck let's say along the way or focused on the fact that to everybody externally i was in the same place then i probably would have not passed through the doorway i went through but because i did pay attention and that i did succeed in my mission I looked at it as a portal that changed things and sent me to another direction. And so when you get into these situations, what I want to kind of instill in you is to just go with the intuitive nature that you are that you possess because the dynamic that you have with the divine is specifically detailed to who you are and what it sees for your future and what it thinks that you're possible that it's possible for you. And so in that moment I released the world and I had I released the karmic cycle. I let go of all my dreams, I let go of all of the what I envisioned for myself and all of that cute stuff and I was like oh fuck okay. it like I did I did the, the the work and now I'm just gonna let the universe take it from here and so the one thing I didn't do was stress I didn't worry about the fact that this place was closing I just knew that it would all work out because I'm on God's payroll that's how I looked at it and so I kept my frequency the entire time I just kept writing and just doing my own thing so the day came and lo and behold just as I expected Another opportunity opened up in Norwalk, California. I don't know much about Norwalk. I know it's near Cerritos, so it's kind of far. But I, on the same day, I had gotten a job offer, but I couldn't take the job because of the commute would have been like an hour and a half each way, and that would have just uh, too much considering that I'm trying to do everything that I'm supposed to do in the divine life. And so I had to let go of all of it on the day that this was all, like it was like a big just day of like everything just coming together. And so I kept my frequency the same space in the same uh, level. And so I didn't react and I was like, okay, it is what it is. Obviously, I'm on, a, I have a purpose here, so I'm just going to follow it. And so I went about just, you know, meandering around my room and like, finishing packing and all that stuff, preparing for the move on Monday to Norwalk. And so I just kind of left it to the universe. And suddenly, it was about a day and it's a Thursday where I just started getting all these downloads of all the possibilities that I could possibly be engaged in uh, going forward. But to remember that I was going to be doing it for the next like 25 years or so. And so to really like think about it. And so I got stuck in a place where I was like, oh, shit. I might get stuck trying to figure this fucking thing out forever. Like, I, because <laughs> it's like there's too much opportunity there. And I'm just like, 
And I could do a lot of it because that was the point of the mission was to overcome my fears. And so when you get to that fearless state, if you're grounded, you understand that though you know you can do anything, you still have to align with the frequency that you possess, right? So I was like, okay. So what had happened is that I decided to relinquish control yet again of that situation by telling the cosmos very clearly. I'm like, I so appreciate, I'm so grateful for everything that, you, that you're presenting me with. But the truth is that that's a lot of possibility here. And I've turned my life over to the service of the divine, of God. And so I will leave it to that energy to assess where I fit best in the plan and then just place me in that. Not to coward out and not to take, not take responsibility for my life, but because I do take responsibility for my, my life and I've surrendered that to God. And so I'll let that be the deciding factor. And so sure enough, everything started to fall in place and I just went about and I was just writing and all that stuff and I, I was writing the new article, the one that I'm referring to right now that kind of aired everything out, but I didn't know where it was going when I started writing it, right? So midway through Friday, a friend of mine that lives here um, came to say our goodbyes, right? And so we were just talking and the next thing I know, he randomly looks at me and he says, hey, I want you to see something that I think I know that you're going to be interested in. But he said it like that, like, I know you're going to be interested in. And I was like, okay, that interesting wording. And, you know, anybody who's been ascending for a minute knows to be cautious of how people interact with you because they mirror things about yourself and all that stuff. So I was like, very, mm, okay. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And so he pulls up a video that I speak about in the new article on LinkedIn, which I'm putting the link below this one. And in it is a schizophrenic personality that is disconnected and disoriented from the actual presence. He's a catatonic person. And it wasn't what he what he looked like because I wasn't able to see it. He was the, my friend was looking at it on his phone. It was in the voice and what I could hear. So because I couldn't see it, I just had to rely on what I was listening to. And I was able to pinpoint exactly what had happened, where the disconnect came from, which parent did it, what the other parent thought of it, what he was going through, and why he was in the situation that he was. And it started to trigger all of these positive things that I had already learned, but that I hadn't put together yet. And that's one of my gifts, is that I have the ability to be like a very strategist. I can connect dots that other people think are unrelated, but that are completely intertwined, especially in religion and sacred texts and all that stuff. That's one of the gifts that, I, that God gave me. And so in this case, what I was blind to was how I fit into the equation. Right? Like, you know, like to say, like, if you're, if you're standing too close to the light, then you don't see that you cast the biggest shadow, right? Because you're seeing only the, the light. And so I had, was blinded by just like being in the illusion that I didn't really know always where I was going. And in this moment, when I finished listening to him, I knew exactly what was happening. And I, it was the moment that I had been waiting for, where the universe directly gave me information as to what it wanted me to do next. And I had to take the leap of faith that I was right, right? Because that's part of this. And I had to do it fearlessly and in the right frequency and think about a new way to re-engage the old system. So as you guys know, I had been heavily relying on LinkedIn through articles because I had learned to funnel my words more carefully that way. But I was now being reintroduced to, to YouTube and I was allowed again to kind of branch out. And I realized through watching one of the videos on YouTube, like some uh, uh, Water Star Vibe, I think her name, Water Star Vibe. Uh, I can't remember specifically, but she is a beautifully gifted tarot card reader who just did a rap song and just put it out there. It was really good. Actually, it was really great. Girl, you did good. Um, and she has a daughter and all that stuff. But she was talking about how you're going to go from zero to hero. And at first I didn't pay any attention to it. But when the epiphany came to me when I was writing as to what exactly was being tasked with me at the moment, I went... Oh, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. So, I want you guys to read the article, so I'm not going to go too far in this video over the details. I'll do that for tomorrow. Um, but when you are going through your journey, a lot of what we perceive to be the root reason why we're doing it isn't really true but still true and so there's like grains of, of truth that you follow on your path right and so though you may sometimes think that you know yourself well sometimes the divine knows your soul better and so things where you might think that you are have shortcomings in will be exactly what is tasked of you in your actual mission in life when you step into your purpose in this world 
And so in that moment, what I want you, everyone to do, if you, if you would, I humbly request that you try this, is that when you think that you know where something is going, immediately pivot while, in, while doing it and consider the opposing side of that just so when something changes dramatically, you are covered because you have gone from one to the other, right? And so because of everything I had been through over the my Saturn return, um, and then over the fact that uh, it took me three years to get through my dark night of, uh, journey all the way through to, to the initiations, it took like a good four years to finish those parts. We had never really gotten to a place where there were souls on, on planet Earth that we knew of that had finished the third initiation and decided to stay to help the rest of the collective. We still haven't discussed that. And so I was in, I was in the process of trying to do that as this last year came about. And so what I failed to realize is that the year wasn't then they were testing me. It wasn't like they, sorry, the, blah, blah, blah. it wasn't like they were testing me directly or like that I had done something wrong. It was that I was I was asking to fill a role that could only happen with additional testing and additional extra things that needed to happen because we weren't dropping the body, right? And up to the third initiation, that's where you ascend. So you no longer need to incarnate. You let go of the physical expression so as to go and become the energy again. You go back into creation itself. And so I was attempting to not do that because we now have that doorway given to us where we don't have to drop the body we can now literally ascend in this physical shell and move into the next phase without a break in between lives and so what i was asking to do was something that we hadn't really experienced before so none of us really have a sense of how that will work out so i didn't really understand it so what i misinterpreted as a personal attack because they thought that i was like the wild card because that's how i'm referred to i'm like the wild one um the wild card uh because i had let that into my brain, I realized that it wasn't that. It was the fact that I was asking for something that hadn't been done usually before, and that I might be one of two people who have gone through this process uh, at this point. And so I immediately, the picture changed to what I was expecting. And so because I, I, I finally in that moment realized I had no idea what was going on, and it was just best for me to relinquish all control that the divine really could have the opportunity to know because they know me right like that there's a high council and there's a whole bunch of things that go that are happening up there right i've expressed this before anything as above so below right so anything that's happening down here has already happened up there it trickles down and the trick is to get the soul to communicate through its vessel as the human form which is one and the same when you're initiated when you uh, go through the initiations but before that you, there's a disconnect so there's like all this weird stuff and sometimes it gets miscommunicated and some people assume ego and all this shit and blah blah blah, blah. it's like all a big mess but when you go through the initiations that stops because i the body learn to relinquish control to the soul and then the soul in the middle of the initiations relinquishes its control to God and to the divine. And you become one. That's the oneness that you start to expand through and you start to return to creation and co-create with that in mind. Okay. Well, in that, I didn't know where to go or what to expect from it. So I kind of, I think I almost limited my ability to really understand what it might mean if I was approved, if the high council or whoever it is, the energy that was so focused on me, if they okayed me, I never really thought beyond that. I kind of stopped just at the, well, great, now I have to go through more testing. And so I, I kind of let that be it, but it wasn't a negative mindset. It was just like, I didn't know what to do with it further. And so what I did is I started to plan for what I thought I had put myself into contention for, not realizing that the divine had gone, no, 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 you're going over here, and I'm putting you right in the smack in the middle of something, and you're going to be uncomfortable with it, and you're going to have to do a big gesture to get the final push for karma to come in and sweep you through and get this done. And so as I sat there, and the reality was, re uh, that I was looking at it in writing that I had written, I was like, holy fuckballs, it's me, it's me. It's me. And so, like, it shocked me. <laughs> and so when you have these moments where you think that you understand things, just understand that sometimes you can't yet truly comprehend what you possess or how big you're going to be 
or how important you're going to serve in something until you let go of trying. Because the moment that all I let go of it all is when all of this came like dominoes. Bum, 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 bum. And so what it taught me is that because we don't know where we're going in after the third initiation now, that at least you have a bear, a, a sense of well, what to expect because I'm, I'm going through it. And what I didn't do was what the divine did do, which is it knew me well enough to know what the future could hold for me. Whereas I kept stopping at certain points, like checkpoints, because that's what I think I've, we've been trained as souls to understand. But once you get past the third initiation, you don't have those checkpoints anymore. And so it's usually best, in my opinion, to have that leap of faith and then make the journey to the hero's journey, right? And so you go from the fool's journey, which, you know, you look ridiculous and all that stuff, and you have to show yourself and your faith and all that, and then you get to a point where you become the hero. And you go through the hero's journey where you prove yourself, which was the last year I did. And so we stop there. But what happens if you're the hero who stays to train future heroes? How does that work? And that's where I think we need to start preparing for a new reality is because what we think we know is still limited compared to what we can do. And so as I'm looking at this article that is now out, I literally had to do the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life, which is to be transparent with what the mission was and how it was in the public and it had to do with TV cameras and all that stuff and finding specific souls that are here on the planet that I apparently know how to contact. And that I had to put it all out there in order to get this wheel to go. And that it would test everything, but that I had been training for it all the entire time. Very key. So when everything came to light, when I was looking at it, my own writing, and I saw the truth, and the, I could see the peacock through the illusion of whatever it was like dressed up in a Halloween costume. It could be a fucking pumpkin for all I care. But I saw that it was still a peacock because I was looking at the truth and truth always shines through. And so as I saw it, I saw how God sees me. And I realized that I could have never prepared for that. And so though I thought I was going this way and that I was going to be heading something up for the collective as far as the structure, I never counted on the fact that there was an entertainment value that served a greater purpose this direction that I was in contention for because I never wasn't seeking it. And that's key too. Don't look for anything, but expect everything, right? Like you're trying to find your evolution and you're trying to grow and prosper, but you don't know how that's going to work out. So then let all that go, but expect something, right? And so that was the process that I wanted to share with you all now, is that when you have these leaps of faith that are required of you, and when you have moments where you're doubting yourself or you encounter like a stop or a moment where you're just not sure what to do, check in with yourself, right? And then you release that to the world at large, and it goes directly to where it needs to go, which is source, whatever you call it, source, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever. Um, and just wait for the answer. And then every time, I guarantee you, it will come to you. But the message here is to just know that whatever you think that you can do may not be anywhere near what God thinks you can do. That's the miracle. When you realize that you are the miracle. It's not something that you do necessarily externally. It's what you do as yourself. You are the miracle. Every time you speak or any time that you create something, when you draw, when you do art of any kind, you are creating space and you're creating an image. And so understand that you are that miracle in God's eye. You are his canvas that he's been working on. And so understand in the moment when you have these leaps of faith that look ridiculous to everybody else and you are tasked with doing something that just is not in your comfort zone and it takes all the balls that you have to do it, whether male or female, that it takes all of that in order for you to even think about doing this. Just do it. Just fucking do it. Because you will never be tasked anything that you aren't set up to succeed at as long as you trust the process and so because I do it, it's going to work out but literally I just 
fucking put all of my baggage, like all of the new tasks that I have in front of me, that's a really big deal, out into the internet. And what it did is it, it freed up the energy. I utilized a couple of things that will help you. I looked around and I saw that I was in a point of transition and that I had succeeded in the mission before that. There was no doubt about that. And when I got to the same situation on the outward appearance wise, I realized that, again, it wasn't how it appeared. I had changed. And so by my changing and not being the same person, it changed the entire dynamic. And so a new doorway was open. And so I used that and the transitional phase and the timing of everything to realize that this was divine timing and that I was having confirmation that it was indeed divine timing. So then I started to kind of decipher throughout my environment different things that people were saying. And lo and behold, here comes a friend who randomly shows me something that opens the doorway to where I'm heading. I would have missed it had I not been paying attention to the fact that I was already looking for the answer. And so that's the other trick to our little session here. When your instinct says that you are looking for patterns, synchronicities, or any type of thing, that an anomaly that points something out to you that's communication, stop any time that even remotely catches your eye because something in it is trying to communicate with you. And I found a video that confirmed this. It was, I can't remember her name, but she did like a, um, I think it was for cancer for this past month. And in it, I found out <laughs> that it, she's a tarot card. And I had just stopped randomly to see her because I was like working on my stuff. And in it, she said that the first card was your ancestors are with you. The second card was your archangels are with you. And third point said the entire heaven is with you, trying to s send you in the direction in which you need to go. Stop and pay attention. And so all of it came together like in a big fucking ball. And I was just like, oh, okay. Which then led me to actually go to sleep. And I, cause I had all this information in my head and I guess my soul was just like, just take a nap. And so I took a nap. And so, cause normally our intuition would tell us to s jump on it. Like if we know what we're supposed to do and it has some sort of value of entertainment that we should jump on it before it disappears. But when you're ascendants, you realize that that's not how it works anymore. You, you've gotten to a point where you're off the game board. And so you're not getting information that's known to the wide world. It's specifically for you. And whether you choose to in, to do it or not is what moves it down to whoever's next. And so I knew intuitively to just tell the high council, I take the opportunity, I'm going to take a nap first, and then we're going to work it out. And so then I actually read it aloud in my space, having alchemized and taken a nap and cleaned my energy. And I, I sang to start, because I always sing when I start a prayer. And so I sang, and then I cleared that vessel, and then my tone was right, and so I started to write. And then the, to rewrite what I had written into something more non alanese because I speak an L. <laughs> Uh, I speak a lot of angel tongue, and so because of that, I had to commit, to kind of commit to to rewriting it, and trust my intuition that the wording that I was choosing would somehow reach the right ears. But instead of stopping there, I had to think ahead and go, okay, this is the part that's going to terrify me. I'm going to name exactly who I want to work with on this project and explain why it's so important, and I'm going to put all of it out there, and I'm not going to even blink an eye on it. And I did. And now that I'm sitting here doing it, there's no way to turn it back. You can't turn back once you've done something like this. And I couldn't be happier or more relieved. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to sit here and just probably draw or something <laughs> equally creative while I wait for, for fate and destiny to take its part. But it wouldn't have happened. And I already know it's going to succeed, which is the weird part. It's just part of, asc of ascension. You get to a point where you just know when it's time for something to move. And then you just trust that the movement will be in alignment with what it is that you that you are understanding it to be. And so I'm having a quiet day, if you will. I've done that. It's already done. There's no turning back. And I'm walking into the storm, knowing what to expect but knowing that I'm on purpose and on mission. And so nothing is going to derail me. And that's part of why I did the whole year long thing is to overcome the fear. So now I'm standing in power, but controlled. And so I'm taking the day to just chill out. And I'm just wanting to connect with you because some of you probably will have never heard of me until this article goes out, or until people start seeing this. And depending on how quickly the response comes that, that is to come, you may 
have this as the first introduction to who I am that you're ever going to have. And so why not connect with you on a soul level and let you see what this is all about? My name is Al Aravalo, and I am an Ascendant. I am in the process of ascending from the third dimension to the fifth dimension along with the collective. And as part of my task, I am helping the collective as a guide that helps pave the way in certain areas or just repave it, depending on what's going on, in a way that welcomes all faiths, all religions, and every educational background to a table where we can all discuss better ways for us as a group to encounter the world. And I just kind of put my name in it for real. So when you get an opportunity where you're connecting with the divine, with God, Allah, whoever you believe in, never doubt that it's not meant for you. Just know that whatever the end result is, is directly only created for your life. And then just trust it. I'm telling you, it does not, it does not let you down. Sure as hell hasn't for me, so. I'm putting the link for the article down here at the on my little information thing and I hope you guys take a look at it and I hope you are inspired to follow suit and just go with your divine plan and just trust that sometimes you may think that you'll get a small part in a big movie and you end up getting the lead role or sometimes you're just a supporting character and perfectly happy with that because you thought you were going to get be an extra never sell yourself short Turn it over to something that knows you better and knows what you're capable of, and then rise to that occasion. Don't drop yourself in order to feel secure. That's it for me. Uh, you guys have a great day, and uh, enjoy the article. All right, bye.